All right, today we're going to talk about how to get started with facial recognition through Facebook's Spark AR Studio. Now, before we get started, guys, you need to make sure you head to Google, search for Spark AR, go to the website, hit download, and make yourself a coffee. Okay, so now that we have Spark AR Studio, what we want to do is create a new project. But if this is your first time using Spark AR Studio, I definitely recommend jumping in and checking out these samples. They have some awesome examples here. But let's jump in and create a project and get the basics going. So firstly, we want to create a new project. So in a project here, we have three different areas. We have the components that are used, the augmentation area, and the actual live preview. Now to get things cracking, we need to add an object and get a face tracker going. This is going to allow us to actually track the person's face. Now in our case, we want to add an image over the face. So we need to also set up a face mesh. So in here, we get a face mesh which has an actual image over the top. Now for us, we're going to add in this image now. So we're going to go to materials, we want to hit plus, and it's going to create a fake material first. So Firstly, that looks super creepy like that, but let's let's change this image. So, materials, and we're going to choose from a file. So, I've pre-created a face here called face.png, and all this is is adding a couple of details over the top of the face. Now, in order to build this yourself, you can't just upload any image. You need to use a little bit of a guideline. So, I found a Facebook AR uh, specific uh, example, which was this mustache by itself, and then what I did is I put my face underneath it to match up the positioning of where that is on someone's actual face. So you want to have a straight on shot so you can match it up and then you can effectively put whatever you want over the top. And that's then going to be the position of, of, of the augmentation on the person's face. So with that in mind, we then want to jump in and we want to get extra components going. Okay, so we're going to set up some effects now. So we're going to do a few different ones. We're going to firstly add a couple for our face. So we want to do ones based on the face tracking. So let's right click on the face tracking and let's add in firstly a particle system. Now this is effectively a little system that's going to allow you to shoot extra information or extra images over the top of the person's face. So firstly positioning wise, I sort of want this a little bit lower so it's starting at the base of the face and I want to make this a line. So the line basically puts it, spreads it out a bit, this is effectively the best way to put it. The birth rate is how many, I'm going to do 15 and then vary that by 50% so it gives it a bit of randomness. And the spray angle, we're going to make it 30 and we're going to make that 100. And that's just going to allow us to have further randomness as to where exactly things are going to go. Now you could increase the speed here, and if we go to like 3, it goes super, super fast, way too fast for anyone to see. So we're going to uh, reduce that way back down to 0.1. Now before we do anything else, we're going to add material to this particle just so that you know, we can actually visually see what's happening. So let's go to materials, we're going to create a new material, and we're going to make it a, a file. We're going to make it an image. And I've already created the image here, uh, but what I did is I went to Third Aurora, Dot com and I went to the team section and I may have pulled a certain person's face from this website and so then what I did is I took that face, cropped it out and just made a little tiny version of his face so we have Matt's face as the particle system here and we can keep on going through now and changing this uh, emission, the, the actual particle system so the particle itself, we can change uh, the size of the particle, uh, how long it lasts for. So, for example, we could set the scale to three, and it would be a gigantic man. In fact, one is still humongous, point one is still really big, so we're gonna go 0.01, although point one looks hilarious. So we're gonna go 0.01 as the size, and we're gonna make these last for two seconds each. So you can see they sort of span up a fair bit over time. We're also gonna add a bit of spin to it, just gonna make them turn a bit and we're gonna vary that at 90 and the tilt will leave at 10 but we'll also 
bit of randomness to it. And so now we have a nice little matte particle system coming off the top of the face. Uh, we're also going to add in another effect, uh, which is a spotlight. And that's just allowing us to have a little bit of an effect. So you can see here, the mats here are a bit brighter. We're going to make these, uh, we're going to make these red. So, and make sure you hit OK, because I've done that probably so many times. So we can now get a little bit of a red flare off and then they sort of it disappears uh, because we can see here in the actual augmentation space it's a uh, direct angle so it's going to be able to cover and we're not going to particularly change anything there so we have now an emitter a spotlight and now we're going to have a color overlay and a color overlay basically allows us to have face sort of being able to see uh, but all the rest of it being a different color or a different image or whatever you want it to be so we're going to add an object we're going to go down to rectangle and insert that. Now the rectangle, we want the size to be the full width and the height to be the full height. And we can see to see here the face is pop popping through. Now we're going to need to add a material here. So we're going to create a new one. And in this case, I'm, I'm not going to go with um, an image. I'm just going to choose a color. But before we choose a color, we need to change the shader type to be face paint. And that's just going to allow us to effectively see through um, rather than it being a flat solid color. So I'm going to choose color and I'm going to make it like a greeny blue sort of color. We're going to decrease this brightness here so it's like really fluoro. You can reduce how much of the background is actually be able to see and you can also reduce like the opacity. We're going to go about 40%. We're going to allow the back in, in, background influence at the top and brightness to be low down. So now we have our three sort of effects set up and ready to go. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to set up a few different animations based on different interactions from the face. So what we need to do is we need to go to the face tracker and we need to go to this patch and go create and we're just going to go with produce a patch. What it's going to do is it's going to bring up this uh, patch editor section. Now the patch editor section is basically uh, allowing you to set up uh, certain conditions when other things are met. So we need this face finder which is basically the face tracker. It's saying of all the faces that we have, which face are we doing this on? And in this case, we only have one face, so it's index is zero. And then this is all the settings for a specific face. So in our case, we want to then take this face and we want to click and drag and we want to choose an interaction. So in this case, maybe uh, one of the interactions we want is when our eyebrows are raised, we want the particle effect to start and stop. So we want the mats to start and stop when our eyebrows are raised or, or not. Uh, we, we're actually going to make it a toggle. So when we raise our eyebrows, it either turns it off or on. So we need the eyebrows raised and we need to bring in, click and drag again, we need to bring in a switch. So we want to insert the patch. Usually when you insert a switch, it'll also add in a pulse, which just does a quick on off um, for the system. And with this switch, we need to do one thing. So we need to go to our emitter section here, uh, which is our particle effect. And we need to double click on this arrow to the left of visible. And this is gonna allow us to toggle the visibility. So if we now click and drag this and connect it up, it now has set it up so that when you raise your eyebrows, it will turn the particle system on or off. And we can see here every once in a while this guy will uh, do it. So we can we can actually see it in, in, in action. So the next one, we want to now change it so the spotlight only comes on at certain times as well. So interaction. And uh, how about we make it that the spotlight only comes on when you smile. So we're going to insert smile. And we need to go to the spotlight. And we need to do this visible check again. And in this case, we don't want it to toggle on and off. So we just want it when you smile, it will do the spotlight. So that's all we need to do. We just need to connect smile straight up to spotlight. And we also have our 
we have our color overlay. So we've got to figure out what we want to do here. So I think we'll go for another toggle. And let's let's go down here. We're going to click and drag interaction. And how about when? How about when we close our right eye? When we close our right eye, we want it to we want it to toggle on or off. So we want to do the same thing. We want to switch into patch and we want to connect this. And so now we should be able to play this. We should be able to use this in real time, but that should be all the patches, all the effects now set up. Okay, so other than the fact that my webcam is super blurry, we can now test out uh, the face cam recognition. We can close and open our eyes. We can set Matt off, smile with the red light. And so we then have the effect going. So we now have the overall functionality going and obviously me talking here doesn't know if I'm talking or if I'm smiling here. So it's, <laughs> it keeps on popping up the red light. But this is then effectively, you have now built your own your own Instagram filter um, that now we can go through and actually publish. Okay, so to actually bring this now to a point where it's on Instagram, what we need to do is firstly, we need to export this. So we need to go export, we need to save it somewhere on our computer. Firstly, it will give you this little quick check here. So we want to export and call it whatever you want. So I'm going to just call it video, video export. Hit save. And that's going to save it onto your computer and it's also going to prompt you to open up Spark AR Hub. Now, if you haven't used Spark AR Hub, what it's going to do is it's going to go to the Facebook site and it's going to ask you to basically set up a new effect. So what we want to do is we're going to upload an effect and it's going to take you through a series of steps. Uh, really easy to follow along. Uh, it's just asking for specific pieces of information along the way. So let's get started. We want to say in this case it's an Instagram effect. We need a map. Uh, we need a name for the effect itself, and this sort of gave away where I was going with it. So I'm going to go with uh, we love Matt. We love Matt H. In case they don't know who Matt is, and uh, we want to hit next. So we need uh, an effect icon, so in this case I'm going to pull in, I, I guess you're supposed to actually take a screenshot of you with the name going, uh, with the effect going itself. So I'm going to argue that, you know, Matt's face, I'm sort of using that in the effect, so let's confirm that. And we want to upload the effect file itself, so we then have the effect file, we want to upload and continue. And so then what this is going to do is allow us to actually go ahead and see this in Instagram. So I can now go to my Instagram personally and check this out. I'll be able to see it for the next 60 minutes. You can also get a preview via a link. This will not be uh, live when you come and watch this video, so there's no point in even trying. But um, yeah, you get a preview link and you're able to then actually see it. So if we go to the next steps, we then need to bring in a video and we need to bring in uh, a category. So category wise, you know, you're choosing between what actual type of, uh, what type of filter is it? So I'm going to go with funny. Okay. And so I've also gone ahead and quickly cut to grab a video of the filter itself. So let's drag and drop that one in here and that is going to upload. And of course you have to wait for it to actually finish uploading, even though it's only 2.2 megabytes. And there we go. So now we have a preview of the effect in action. So we can go ahead, we can make the active, we can make it active straight away, or we can set it to be within a certain date range. Review information, I'm gonna go ahead and quickly type that in. But effectively, once you've filled in the review information, you get you're gonna get a chance to submit it and then it's gonna take about five days before you actually get any response about it. So any filters that you end up creating guys, please send through that share code. We wanna check out any and everything that you create. We can't wait to see what you guys come up with. Thanks for watching guys.